I guess to speak on the sense of uh, impatience that I often have with myself. Um, impatience, borderline anger with myself that I feel like is one of the things I've been working through this year. Um, traditionally, when I work on an album, I'll pour everything into it. You know, it requires a lot of me. Like guys I know who really love their work, making great work. There we call it. There's a certain level of bleeding. Like I, this cost me something. I pushed through the final 10, 5%, which is the hardest part where you're pulling your hair out and you're like, oh my God, you know? But you're like combing over it and making sure like, okay, this is, this is actually complete, you know? For me, that process always takes three times longer than I think it should. Maybe four, maybe five. <laughs> actually making an album. Every time. So there's a point when I'm two thirds of the way through, three quarters of the way through, where I'm bummed and I'm angry with myself. This should be done. I should be farther along. I get to the end of a day where I spent all day sort of tweaking minutia, which depending on who you are, some would say you shouldn't be doing that. You should just be making decisions, moving on, making decisions, moving on. There are some days where I do that. I make a decision, I move on quickly. Those days feel good because I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But there's something about the days where you have to tweak minutia something's not working in here, but I believe there's a solution. Do I like record another part? Do I retract my vocals? Do I do some creative editing? Do I play with the tone of that snare all day? You know, cause all of those things by percentage are like reining this thing in, you know, some artists are really good at it and they do those things really quickly. I don't do them quickly. I wasn't trained in this. I still can't remember like numbers of frequencies and what I should be hearing, I tend to just be like tweaking knobs, you know what I mean? Until I f it sounds right to me. But the process always takes way longer than I think it should. And I think the point I'm trying to get at is, I in the past have had levels of like anxiety attack when I'm like coming near the completion of an album because I'm pushing so hard, the anxiety of it's not happening fast enough, I know where I wanna get, I'm not getting there, begins to like, wear down my body and my mind and I start to get threadbare and fearful and and I feel like I've, I've, I'm coming a long way where there's with this current work there's been maybe the first time where I'm able to just kind of like settle into it settle into it and just if it happens today it happens today if it doesn't like end the day and be like I did my best this is all I have to show for it I'm gonna like leave my work now and I'm gonna like hang with my kids and I'm gonna like be present at dinner instead of still trying to like solve the equation or something, you know? Honestly, taking walks in the morning has been, walks or drives, first thing in the morning has been a lifeline. I never did that in the past. And like I said, I'm, I'm almost drawn to it now. I think something about getting out and seeing like open landscapes where my eyes can like go all the way out to the horizon does, it really does something to the soul. If you're a creative and you sit in front of a computer most of your day, I like highly recommend you take moments in the day, whether it's a lunch, first thing in the morning, end of the day, and you drive or you get out somewhere where you can, your eye gets to see to the horizon. I've always been drawn to the ocean too, for that reason. Like you sit and it's limitless. There's a point, you know, there's a horizon point. There's something really calming about that. And so every day I start my day like, looking at a horizon, walking, and letting my mind and my world be bigger than like the minutia that's gonna pull me in in an hour, you know? And somehow that's like, for the first time, brought a lot of balance to the process, rather than waking up and being like, okay, I got seven more days to finish this, and just like, good morning, drink my coffee, and then go to work, and then come out of the studio at like five at night, just like, ah, you know what I mean? Like. You can only do that so long. When you're young and hungry, maybe you can do that for a couple of years, man. I'm at a point where I can't do it anymore. It's not good for me. It's not good for my family. The work isn't worth that to me, you know? Probably you keep doing that, it's gonna shorten your lifespan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So learning, learning some frequency and some um, rhythms is the better term. But then to continue upon that thought, something that I hadn't done in the past, to my knowledge, is then when you go into the place where you're doing your work, 
It's like, well, you, know, you hear people say this, but it's a reality. It's like, you can take the Lord with you. The Spirit of God can go with you into your work. I think in the past I would. I would like offer up my prayer in the morning and be like, I'm going to work, Lord, bless the day. And then just go and like drive in, drive in, drive in, drive in. You know what I mean? But starting the day peacefully and then being like, okay, let's go to work now. And then sitting down and being like, okay, we're going to do this. I need you with me today. And actually like inviting the spirit of God to be with you in your day, you know? You have these guys, Brother Lawrence and others, that have like written little booklets about like, you can commune with God just as closely when you're doing dishes or the most menial tasks, you know what I mean? I happen to do work I love. And maybe even because of that, I feel like in the past there's been some like, wrote this song about God. The songwriting process, I was with him, but now the production process, which literally takes 20 times as long, you wait outside the door and I'm gonna do this all by myself. And I think that's what's changed too, is now it's like, I actually can't do that anymore, man. I've burned myself out um, producing music that way. I need you to be there with me and I need you to be here with me now. And that's changed over the past 15 years of making music. It's taken me a long time to understand how to do that, how to like, how one thing can seamlessly be part of the other, you know? Um, I'm still learning, but it's working. It's, it's actually life-giving now. I think a few years back, I was like, I love making music, but I can't do it this way anymore. I can't do this anymore. It's right around the time I released Home, you know? That's when I started, I was having anxiety attacks and stuff. Like, what's going on, you know? That was my youthful, like, vigor it was gone. <laughs> I, I couldn't pull from, like, the well of, like, energy any longer because I'd spent 10 years, like, draining it. And so now, literally, if I'm gonna make something, I'm like, I need you to like be here. I need to do this in peace or I can't do it anymore, you know? Um, which is interesting, it's, it's ironic. The very thing you love to do, feel like you're made to do, to be like unable. But then you learn what's the source, what's the source of our like ability and energy and power, vitality. Like, it's him, you know? And I think that's, I'm understanding that in an actual tangible way, not just a poetic way. Because for a while, everyone would nod their head like, oh, totally, dude. But I'm realizing that in like a tangible lifeline way. If I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna do this, I can't do it the way I've been doing it. I have to like find a new way. And it's been actually like in communion with him, so.